What's going on guys? My name is Kerry and today I'm going to show you both ends of the manufactured home pricing spectrum. I get a lot of comments about pricing and I get it. People want to know what the homes cost so they can decide if it's something they can afford. What I'm going to do is log into my back office, find the single most affordable floor plan we've got access to, and then I'm going to give you the price. Then I'm going to do the exact opposite. I'm going to find the biggest, baddest double wide we've got, and I'm going to add all of the best upgrades to it to see if we can design the most expensive double wide in history. I'm in Canada where the prices are already quite a bit higher than what the folks in the States are used to paying. So get ready to pick your job off the floor because I already priced this puppy out and even I was a bit shocked. I'm going to do a US dollar conversion so that you're comparing apples to apples and you can get a true sense of what our pricing looks like. At the end, I'll do a breakdown of the monthly payment on the most affordable floor plan we've got versus what I think is going to be the most expensive double wide in history and then everything else we offer will be somewhere in between. So let's get into it. The most affordable floor plan that we have is a 14 by 40, 560 square foot, two bedroom, one bathroom with a front living room. It's comparable in size to a park model, except instead of being 12 feet wide, it's 14 feet wide, which makes a big difference to the overall feel when you're inside the home. This is a perfect layout for a young couple, folks downsizing, or even a cottage. Honestly, there are so many scenarios where this home works really well because it is so affordable. The price tag delivered and set up is $102,000 plus tax. In my area, new homes are taxed at 5% and that hasn't been added to the price. Depending on where you live, that might seem like a great price or you might be thinking, holy smokes, that's insane, Carrie, you're crazy. That's the reality of where we are in 2021. Houses are expensive. Over the last 12 months, they've shot up in price, which is the exact opposite of what I would have predicted to happen. But here we are, 2021, in my area, $102,000 for a 560 square foot home. To put it into perspective, let's see what else we can buy for the same amount of money. I shop vehicles in my area in the same price range and found a truck at a dealership just up the street from me. So we can buy a house for $102,000 or we can buy a 2021 Dodge Ram 3500 Laramie priced at $107,000 currently on sale for $101,000. Full disclosure, this is my least expensive house versus one of their most expensive trucks, but you get the drift. You can go with a house or a truck, and when you look at it that way, it doesn't seem so bad. Given the choice, I would take the house over the truck. It just seems like better value to me because you can't live in a truck. At the same time, I guess you can't drive a house and trucks are pretty cool, so your pick. If you're watching from the States, let me know what a similar floor plan would cost there. My guess would be 60, maybe $70,000. Let me know. Nobody clicked on this video to see the most affordable floor plan we offer, so let's get to the juicy stuff. We're gonna design a dream double wide and see if we can make it the most expensive ever in history. The plan I'm starting with is 27 feet wide by 76 feet long to make it a whopping 2,052 square feet. The plan is four bedrooms, two bathrooms with an absolutely massive laundry room. With a house this big, everything costs more. If you look at the setup of a house this size, you're gonna have way more in materials. You've got more for blocking, more for skirting, more for concrete going under the home depending on what you're gonna put it on. Everything adds up so fast. Then you've got the upgrades within the home that are priced on a per square foot basis. The drywall, quartz counters, flooring. When you're working with a house this size, every one of those additions is big money. I'm gonna design this house as if money were no object and I could get whatever I wanted. And I'm not gonna bother listing the normal upgrades I put into every single house, only the big ticket items. Here's what I would get if money was no object. Drywall, and on a house this size, that's a $19,000 upgrade. This is something that's way more expensive in Canada than it is in the States. When I was buying houses from Palm Harbor out of Oregon, drywall actually came standard and I had to pay extra if I wanted to get vinyl covered gyprock panels. Definitely getting the upgraded cabinets. Vinyl plank flooring throughout the entire house. Hardy board siding. 
a gas fireplace in the living room, and another gas fireplace in the bedroom. Quartz counters in the kitchen and bathrooms. Six foot walk-in showers in both bathrooms. The stainless steel appliance package with a gas cooktop and a wall oven. An absolutely massive island in the kitchen. Hot water on demand. 512 roof pitch. A patio door off the dining room and two extra windows in the living room. That's only adding 13 big ticket items to this house, but as I mentioned before, on a house this size, it's crazy how much it affects the price. Those 13 items would cost an extra $85,000. Super easy to spend. I did it in about a minute. That's why I always say, and sometimes I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, but be very careful with your budget because the upgrades can add up really fast, especially when you're dealing with a house this size. If you combine my wish list upgrades with the upgrades that I put into almost every house, normally 10 to $15,000 worth, we're almost at the same price as the entire 560 square foot house. So the total amount of upgrades we've now got going into the dream house is $100,445, which is absolutely insane. To give you a true idea of the final cost, I'm gonna include delivery to my city, setup, and a concrete pad. However, the price will not include any land costs. Brace yourself. The price for the 27 by 76, 2,052 square foot, four bedroom, two bathroom home with all the best upgrades is $469,219. Let that sink in folks, almost a half million dollar double wide. So not really a realistic price for 2021. However, when I first started selling manufactured homes way back in 2009, we were able to sell a home for 60 to $70,000 for a new single wide. And here we are 12 years later and the same home costs over $100,000. So it's hard to say where prices are gonna go in the future. I certainly don't have a crystal ball. For all I know, in 12 years, maybe prices will be lower, but I doubt it. Sometimes when looking at home prices and figuring out affordability, it's easier to look at the monthly payment. You know what you're comfortable paying every month and then you can compare it to what something similar would rent for. Keep in mind, these prices don't include land ownership or pad rent, so those numbers definitely have to be factored into your monthly expenses. I'm gonna use an interest rate of 3.5%. Interest rates are a bit lower in Canada right now, but talk to a mortgage broker and see what rate you would get on a new home purchase. The $102,000 house with 10% down over 25 years would be $473.84. The payment on what could easily be the most expensive double wide in the world is $2,226 plus 450, give or take, for pad rent. Not to mention, it's gonna be really hard to find a pad in a mobile home park that's gonna be big enough for a house that size. Depending on where in the world you're watching from, that might seem absolutely insane, or you might be sitting there thinking, you know what, that's not that bad. If you're looking to buy a new manufactured home in 2021, you can expect to spend anywhere between 100 and 500 thousand dollars the price of manufactured homes have gone up over the last year people are staying home working on renovations and factory supplying materials have had to shut down temporarily causing supply shortages it's been a perfect storm causing prices to go up there's more to it than just those two reasons if you've got theories on why home prices seem to be popping off in every single location i'd love to hear them Luckily, interest rates are lower, so even though the sticker prices have gone up, the monthly payment is still reasonable if you're able to save up the down payment. That's all I've got for today. If you like manufactured home videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel because I've got a lot more coming. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.